There is no planet B. The planet that we call home today is the only planet our children will inherit. Experts say we're in the middle of another great extinction event, and we already see species and entire ecosystems disappearing at unprecedented rates. As humans, we deeply feel this suffering as well. The physical health effects of climate change on humans is well documented, including surges in respiratory illnesses, massive natural disasters, and decreased access to food and clean water. It's plain to see the physical repercussions of climate change. However, human suffering goes beyond physical pain. Experiencing current climate-related disasters while also anticipating future catastrophic events weighs heavily on the minds of millions, especially in vulnerable populations like adolescents and children who feel their future is at stake. Mental health experts worldwide are pleading with researchers and policymakers to view climate change as a threat to people's mental well-being. The knowledge of the state of the earth is inescapable, with virtually limitless access to news and media. In particular, children and adolescents are an extremely vulnerable population as they have easy access to this information, but are at a critical stage in their psychological development. Researchers recently surveyed 10,000 young adults worldwide regarding their thoughts about climate change and government inaction. Over 50% cited feeling helpless, angry, anxious, guilty, and powerless, and 75% stated that they were frightened about the future. While these statistics are profound, they are not enough to capture the whole experience of living under the weight of climate change and what it means to someone, and we are still left with a gap concerning what it is like for children and adolescents of the world. Youth can feel anxiety, uncertainty, and hopelessness regarding climate change, and they don't always have the ability to process and voice their feelings. I noticed this in my own child, which prompted me to go on this journey and to help give voice to the voiceless. As a nurse, I've personally seen people struggle with climate-related fears and not know where to turn. Nurses are called to understand patients holistically. We are to uncover how various factors affect someone and provide the best treatment and interventions available. But this crisis goes well beyond what we can do as nurses. Addressing the fears of millions of youth requires a global team of psychiatrists, social workers, school nurses, pediatricians, and parents and guardians. Trying to help millions is overwhelming, but it can begin by starting a conversation. My dissertation begins this conversation by asking kids a question no researcher has yet. Tell me what it means to you to be concerned about climate change. This simple inquiry could provide relief from mental anguish as we validate and assist these children and adolescents through their thoughts and feelings. Please ask youth in your life how they feel about climate change. You may be the only one who does. Thank you.